I'm just getting slapped, bro. This is crazy. I should have played Mario Kart. Damn. <laughs> is it too late to switch? Fuck. Yo, it's your boy Devin Tracy. I'm here with PTW. You already know what it is. Slap. Uh, I'm from Saga City. Um, born and raised. It was dope growing up in Saga. Uh, I went to Sheridan Park Elementary School. And then I went to Homelands for middle school. And Arendelle for high school. And I actually dropped out of high school when I was... I had about two credits left. And I dropped out and moved to LA for like six months. And then... My grandparents being teachers, of course, I had to go back and finish. So originally I tried to do my, my courses online and then I couldn't do it at the time because I was just too occupied with music and stuff. And I was in LA, I was like 16, 17. So I was like, fuck, this is too much for me. And then I ended up doing it later, like probably a couple of years ago now. Yeah, I graduated, finally got my diploma because my grandma was a guidance counselor. My grandfather was a principal and a teacher. And my aunt was uh, is a teacher as well. So. Definitely something that I had to finish. Play baseball, basketball. Um, I used to sail actually. I used to do. I used to go to summer camp and do um, sailing classes. We do half a day of sailing and then half a day of playing tennis. Um, since I was super young, I always loved to dance. But I started taking it seriously when I was about 10 or 11. Um, I enrolled for in a studio called Jade's Hip Hop Academy in Brampton, and um, that's where I kind of fell in love with it. Definitely my parents, um, both of my parents, pretty musical. My mom used to sing. My pops was a dancer. He was well known for like being a dancer in school back in the day, so. I wanted to be able to make a lot of money and I knew that being a dancer, there's so many dancers. That's, even though there's a lot of artists, like dancers don't get paid as well and there's not as much opportunity and they're usually in the background. So I knew I wanted to transition into music and it's always been something that I love to do. I always used to rap and freestyle at school or whatnot. So um, I started recording, taking it serious when I was like 15. And I've been recording with the same engineer pretty much since then. Shout out Sunny Diamonds. Diamond Factory Studios, you dig. Crash Bandicoot, uh, Metal Gear Solid, GTA, love GTA, 2K, I always loved it. Before 2K, I used to play NBA Live until it just got whack. Other than that, I've never really been into video games too heavy. I've always kind of, even to this day, I feel like I love to play video games. Don't get me wrong every now and then, but I don't like to be like too zoned out because I feel like I could do something more productive, like write lyrics or whatever the case may be. Uh, recess, definitely recess. I used to run home from school just to watch recess every day, every single day, recess. Um, to be honest, I don't even really watch ball like that. But long story short, I auditioned for this dance crew um, and it ended up being something completely different than I thought it was originally, but it was more like cheerleading and like chanting for the Raptors. So I kind of fell out real quick, but it was a cool experience because I got to see how the ACC works, how the Raptors work, all that. So my grandfather played instruments. Um, my, as I said before, my mom used to sing, uh, my dad, used to rap. He was never really the best at rapping, but um, I actually have like an old song that him and his buddies recorded probably in like the 80s at some point. Yeah, first time recording, I was probably 14 or 15. And this dude had like a little studio inside of his basement. And I remember going there, I was mad nervous. I had like some shit written though, so it wasn't like I had to make anything on the spot or anything, but I just remember being mad nervous, but it felt good. Like leaving the studio, I knew I wanted to continue doing this. Yeah, so I started doing like freestyles and little remixes and dropping them on YouTube. And then I really wanted to create something that was my own because people would always ask me like, okay, you can do these freestyles, but can you, do you have original music, original content? So I started working with a couple of producers um, who I still work with to, to this day. Shout out Joe McLaren. Um, and really just started building my own sound, building, getting more comfortable recording and writing and the whole process. Some of my early influences in music, uh, like I said earlier when I walked in, I seen the little Bow Wow poster. Bow Wow was probably like one of my favorite rappers growing up because he was just that guy when we were young. My other influences would be like Michael Jackson, um, Aretha Franklin. My mom used to listen to like a lot of soul, 
uh, a lot of reggae. Grew up listening to a lot of reggae. My dad was a huge reggae fan. Jay Z. Jay Z was definitely a big part of my of growing up. Life after midnight. Um, that's the brand. That's the gang. And it's really just like a way of life, cause we literally don't sleep. We be up to all hours of the night. And it's not even. I feel like life after midnight is not only for those who stay up after midnight, like past twelve and up early in the morning. It's also for people that wake up early, that gotta wake up early in the morning and grind. And it's really just um, not worrying about sleep and doing whatever you gotta do to make your dreams possible. We were there for like a month and we got to go to Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Paris, um, Cannes, France, south of France, Germany, Poland. I had been to Europe a couple times before, but I haven't been there like that long. So we were there for like a month, so we got to see a lot, got to experience a lot. Some days we were in like three different countries in like the same day, so it was pretty crazy. We were running to jump on the train, almost missed our train like three times, slept in some shady hotels and and yeah, but overall it was dope. Definitely want to go back, do some bigger shows next time for sure. I would say, no, I can't even lie, the pizza in Paris was really good. And the cappuccinos in Paris were really good. But to be honest, we really ate kind of like American. Like we ate burgers and fries and all that junk pretty much for the most of the time. But we had some nice dinners, like had some pastas, sushi, some different stuff. So I'm just getting slapped, bro. This is crazy. I should have played Mario Kart. Damn. <laughs> is it too late to switch? Fuck. We can switch. All right, let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. I'm giving up the 2K, bro. I just took an L. That's crazy. A lot of Atlanta shit. Um, I listened to 21, Thug, Gunna, Lil Baby, Future, Rallo Rodriguez, Loso Loaded. Um, a lot of underground Atlanta, too. Like, young guys on the come up. Yeah, so the choosing video, we shot it on July 4th. Um, we were in Miami. The day was super crazy because we tried to get all the shots in. We were only in Miami for like three days and we had flown out the cameraman and everyone from Atlanta. We pulled out the, we had a rave, right? A black rave. So we pulled that out, shot with that. Gunna ironically pulled up in the white rave. So we're like, okay, so this is perfect. <laughs> so that worked out. And then we ended up following Gunna to his um, appearance that he had at G5. You know how that club shit gets like super crazy, so we're in there. Had to get sneak the camera into the club pretty much. Um, walked through the whole club, which was packed. We shot the rest of the video, got the rest of the shots in there. So other than that, it went pretty smoothly, but um, it was just crazy. Like that day was just a blur because I just remember literally just moving nonstop for the whole day, but it was worth it in the end, so. Um, shit. I'm getting ready to drop a lot of shit. I really just been perfecting my sound, really just trying to work on my craft, get better every day, and just build up my resume and get some more features and whatnot. Because I feel like when I release a project, I really want it to be dope. I don't want to just throw some shit together to be like, yeah, new project. Because I got records for days. I literally got like 300 songs on my laptop. So it's not even about the music. It's just really about putting it out right too, because I don't want to drop shit too and then just have it sitting around and, and let shit go to waste. I, make, I want to make sure that it touches the right people, it gets on the right blogs, all that. So I got a new project. It's called 4 a.m. It's coming real soon. Choosing is going to be the lead single off that one. And then we just shot another video in Atlanta, so that's going to be on it as well for the single called Proudy, which I'm dropping next. It's going to be more catered towards women. so. This is gonna be the one for the ladies. And then the next project I'm gonna do is gonna be more of the bangers. So I'm gonna have the joint with Thug on that one. And then the following project is gonna be like some real life shit where I'm just talking about um, shit that I went through growing up and becoming an artist. Um, I say Chris Brown. I feel like me and Chris would just make some crazy shit. And with the dance shit, like the video would be sick. Just have a bunch of baddies with us dancing, like I, that shit would definitely go viral. Damn, bro, I had some fucked up jobs. I was a dance teacher for a little bit, but originally I thought the job would have been like a, 
like older kids, but it ended up being like toddlers and like super young kids. I was like, kind of like, damn, like how am I gonna even pull this off? But I ended up just doing some simple stuff. They liked it, but it was like hard for them to follow because they were so young. So that's why it was just kind of bizarre to me because I'm like, how could they have a hip hop? Why would they hire me as a hip hop teacher and make me audition and everything just to go teach like kids, babies that could barely even walk. So it was like, it was weird, I don't know. Chelsea from That's So Raven. I used to think she was a baddie. <laughs> oh no, I lied, no, I lied, I lied, I lied. It's Topanga. Topanga. Topanga's bad. <laughs> Topanga was a baddie. I'm half Trini, half Canadian, so I love Trini food. Like any roti, doubles. I like Jamaican food too. Colombian food. I'd rather eat at home, to be honest. I'd rather home cook me. I'd rather my mom's cook something, because especially since I travel a lot, I'd be on the road, like eating out a lot of fast food and all that. So as corny as it sounds, you really can do whatever you set your mind to. So you just gotta stay persistent and have faith. And I, th I feel like um, being optimistic and definitely praying um, is definitely a factor in becoming successful and getting the things that you want out of life. Uh, some of my goals um, are to get my visa so I could travel back and forth to the US whenever I want without the hassle. Do some more features, travel as much as possible, work towards bigger goals like getting Grammys, um, number one top chart billboard hits, just more success, more growth. Shout out to Push The Wall, you know, I've been rocking with y'all for a minute. You know what's up, man. I had to give y'all a shout out. You already know it's love. Appreciate y'all having me come through. I just want to say stay tuned for new music. Got a lot of big shit on the way, and I'm excited for y'all to hear it.